this is Kathy from Easy Sunday Club and welcome to my watercolor tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how I paint a simple watercolor cat. Um, I'm most drawn to this style because it allows me to kind of go free with the wet on wet style. So this tutorial is going to be somewhat beginner friendly, but I expect that you will have a basic understanding of the wet on wet technique. Um, but I, what I love about this loose painterly watercolor style is that you can paint a cat without getting into t too much technical details of um, painting an animal. So let's get into it and I will show you how I approach this cat. Before I start the sketch, I'll just quickly go over my materials. So I have my paint palette here, uh, my palette, paint mixer palette, a pencil for the sketch, eraser, and for this painting, which is just a, a small 5x7, I'm going to use a size 8 round brush and the size 2. I have both the Scotta and Princeton. I don't really have loyalty towards one particular brush brand, but um, I do believe that the quality of brush matters somewhat. Um, and I'm using a cold press watercolor paper by um, Fabriano. So now I'm going to start the pencil sketch. And I may speed up part of the video a bit just because I want to focus more on the painting part for this tutorial and less on the sketching. The cat I picked is a Persian cat. She's a very fluffy long hair cat. Long hair cats are tricky to paint, but I think using this loose technique, it gives me some shortcut around that. And so you can see this cat has a super fluffy tail that is raised behind her, which gives it a very interesting composition. Persian cats have flat nose, rounded cheeks. They almost remind me, remind me of the Pekingese dog. And their eyes are close together, so I'm gonna move them closer together. And I'm trying to make the pencil mark a little darker, just because in my last tutorial, I realized afterwards that the pencil marks are hard to see. Uh, they don't really show up in the video. I usually do my pencil sketches super rough, even rougher than what you see right now, but for the sake of the tutorial, I will try to make them more defined. Especially for this type of loose style, you don't really need to sketch out too much detail there. And obviously the size of the painting matters too. If this was a, no, a twice or four times as large of a paper, then I'll have to fill in more details in the eyes and ears. And next, I'm gonna pre-mix a color palette for this. This Persian cat's gonna be an orange-brown color. So I was thinking of going something like this. I mixed it before I started recording, but to get to this color, I mixed Chinese orange with a bit of uh, what, burnt umber. That's pretty good. It's a bit more brown than this one, but I like that. So the first step is I'm going to apply water over the paper where the cat should be. I'm wetting the paper to kind of prime the painting for the wet on wet technique. And now if what I just did there was I clean off the brush and now I'm dipping the brush in the paint. I'm um, thinking this is a little too watered down so I'm going to mix more paint in it. I 
And while the paper is still wet, I'm going to gently tap the brush onto the left side of the wetted areas and you can see that the watercolor paints start blooming which is by design I wanted it to look like this see this these edges here look super cool and to help travel a little further I'm just taking a cleaned off brush and kind of dragging it downwards more and the paint's going to keep going as far as it can and obviously it depends on how concentrated the paint is and you know how much water there is but I'm thinking I need to add more here because I want the left side to be darker than the right so again I'm um, while the paint is still wet, I'm applying another layer to it to help it go a little further. And down here, you can see that I didn't wet the entire cat, just kind of the body area. So the paint is going down, but because the paper is flat, it's not traveling that much further down. So what I'm gonna do is just I just drag kind of the tip of where the paint ends downwards so that the bloom can continue. To the rest of the cat. I'm actually gonna keep adding more paint to this because I want this spot kind of the back part of the tail to be the darkest. And another thing I'm gonna do now, this part I find is a little bit too defined because um, the tail is actually really fluffy. It's not just this you know, rounded thing. So I'm gonna take the second brush wet it, the smaller brush, and I just turn it around. So what I'm gonna do is go along the outer edges so the brush kind of barely hugs it and I'm dragging it out to soften the hard edge. That looks better to me, but it's still a bit too hard for my liking. So I'm going in again. Now you can see the darker part, the brown paint wants to spread this way because now there's water. So I don't want it to, to go fur too far out because the tail will look like, I don't know, like there's another cat hiding. I'm going to let it dry for now and move on to the body but I think for this piece the tail is a defining feature so I want to make sure that I have that down for the face I'm going to mix a bit of a flesh it's actually a flesh tint gouache so it's more opaque but because I use a lot of water it might as well be watercolor and I'm applying a base layer to the face. Um, not too worried about you know, painting within the line perfectly, filling out the silhouette. Right now I'm just applying a base layer. And for this part of the cat, I made use some wet on dry because I don't want the entire cat to look like this. It's just not as interesting. And I can see that if you look on the side, you can see you kind of check to see how wet the paper is. If it's the paper is really wet, you can see a puddle in certain places. But if it's damp, it still glistens, but it's not, it doesn't puddle as well. So it looks like this part is 
you know, it's between damp and wet. And I'm ready to apply a layer of paint over it, a pigment. So I'll take the same color and kind of under where the cat's chin is, there's some shadows. So I want to go in and do that there. And just to prevent the paint from from going upwards because I want the shadow to stay within the chin so I'm going to do this and start dragging it down to the leg and I'm checking here this this leg is almost dried so I'm going to take the small brush And because I want the light to be a darker color, I'm filling this in. So when it's, since this part is almost dried, I have a lot more control over where the pigment goes. So I can just apply a small, this small paintbrush over this part. Obviously, I don't want it to just look like this. So cleaning off the brush and start pulling it upwards create a nice gradient. I'm checking back in this area to see if I want to do something with it because it's still damp so if I want to create more blooms or add more pigment now's the time to do it. Once it completely dries it's hard to you know, intensify the bloom without creating hard edges over it because you no know, the base layer already dried so I'm gonna try to add one more layer you can see it's harder to bloom now because the paintbrush or sorry, the base is almost completely dried so I'm gonna have to use the pulling technique to get it spread out a bit more I'm being a bit more aggressive here just because I want there to be a deeper contrast between this part of the tail. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to try a reverse bloom. What I mean by that is this part is lighter, but I'm cleaning off my bigger brush and just loading a bit of water, not too much. And I'm gonna drop the brush here. And you can see it's blooming, it's the water is blooming back towards almost creating a counter current against the darker part of the brush. And I like that look a lot. Um, it's gonna look different when it dries as well. I know some watercolor artists avoid this, but I really like it, especially for simple paintings like this. You can always use a paper towel to clean off some paint while it's still wet. All right, so I think this part's good. I don't want to overlook it, uh, overwork this. But I do want to make sure this area is nicely bloomed and not creating this hard cauliflower edge. All right, see area that I was working on earlier under the chin, after it dries, it lightens a lot more. Um, and I want the shadow to be more defined. So now I'm going back in and with the surface dried, I'm using the fine brush to kind of draw in or paint the underside of the cat. Obviously right now it looks kind of weird so I'm using, again, yeah, I'm counting on my good old pulling technique to define the shadow but also to start defining the fur on the cat. 
like I said, this is a very loose style, so I'm not trying to create realistic fur. Sort of just creating broad strokes to infer the appearance in in fur. <laughs> the appearance of fur. Oh boy. Um and don't forget the other leg there, which will be a little darker. So I'll add more burnt ombre here. I have a bit of the sniffle, so sorry if it's a little distracting. So that looks fine, and yeah, I'm gonna work backwards. Oh, well, not backwards. <laughs> to work on the hardest part and the most detailed part, which is the face. And I'm taking the brownish paint using the fine brush to define the ear. And you may notice the entire cat, I'm using the Chinese orange and burnt ombre palette, but some parts of it uses more burnt ombre than the Chinese orange. the nose it's a little darker than the cheeks so I'm going in with a very light shade of the orange brown I'm just applying a layer over the dry surface and going over it again with a slightly darker value going over it again this time with the browner more concentrated burn ombre to redefine the ears again. And I'll wait for it there. That's pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to start defining the, the face and around the mouth. The Persian cat has a flat face, just like the Pekingese. So, you know, to, even though it's a flat face, there are still um, shadows, slight shadows. So, again, not getting too technical or detailed. I'm just roughly defining where I want the mouth to be. going from lighter to darker so the nose is um the nose is um also a brownish color but it's probably going to be the darker brown so i'm just working my way towards the the snot area For now, I'm trying to see if I'm happy with the rest of the cat, because this is the last part I want to work on. Um, I like the simplicity of this part, and I like how it has a nice gradient wash from the first time I apply the first you know, layer of wash, so I'm actually going to leave it here as is. But this part here, I noticed that when I apply my last 
layer of darker paint, it dried up and it created this kind of hard edge that I'm not a huge fan of. I think it was because I applied it when the paper was almost dry, so the blooming didn't really take effect. So again, I'm using a cleaned brush, clean but loaded with water. And to soften the edge, I'm just going to rub the brush in to the edge of the paint where it has that hard edge. And you want to cover about you know, a quarter inch around the edge, not just directly on the edge, because I'll show, in a bit, show you in a bit that to fix this issue, you want to kind of wet the area around it. And make sure you're not using too much water here because then it will create that, remember that reverse blooming effect that I showed you earlier? It's gonna create that and you don't want that, or at least I don't want that here. So now that the edges are softer, I'm gonna take my paper towel and just dab it softly. Hopefully it won't remove too much paint. I just want the edges gone. Um, I think that's okay. See on top here, I did that, see that hard edge again. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And keep in mind this paint is pretty dry, but I can still remove it. So, you know, when watercolor dries, it's not end of the world, especially when it's not super dark. So, you know, when people tell me watercolor is hard to control, once it dries, it's too late, I just kind of nod and smile. See what I did there? I softened up the edge a bit more and it just looks a lot more, you know, it gives more the perception of fluffiness than having a hard edge. All right, so the face is pretty dried and I'm thinking it's time to work on the eyes. Still wanted to find the ear a bit, but not too much. So going in and just very decisively adding this part, the top part of the ear fold. Now I'm working on the ear, oh, <laughs> the nose. And the eyes, so I'll start introducing um, a black, the black color, but I'm not using black paint, I'm using Sepia Natural, which is almost a black, it's more of a charcoal black. I like that because, you know, black sometimes is a bit too stark. Plus I can, I like the control of I like the option of slowly darkening it to black if that was the case. I just bought this brush and I really like the level of control I have over it. Again, it's a size 2 Escada. For the longest time I didn't have a size 2 and I was just trying to get by with a size 4 brush to fill in these details and I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so now I'm adding a bit more shadow over the top of the eye. Four minutes. Mm. 
And adding another slightly darker layer over the nose. I'm just slowly adding darker accents around the eye to make it look more interesting. Kind of give it an illusion of eye sockets. Notice that the hind leg here, oh, the foreleg, the one in the shadow looked a bit funny. So, I'm gonna try to correct it by adding more shadow. it up a bit. You can see that pieces like this a lot of trial and error. Mainly I want to show you, you know, we make mistakes even while painting. Sometimes you just don't know what you'll get. And that's totally okay. You just improvise and there are tricks and Tips and tricks to save the painting from going in the trash can. I'm um, just for simplicity again. I'm just using the same sepia natural to sort of define the paw. Just very roughly. There you go. Maybe I want to add a hind leg because this one looks like, you know, there should be a little bit of like of the left hind leg there. So. Maybe I want there to be more of a definition that shows the transition between the body and the beginning of the tail. So I'm gonna again add some water here, not too much. And again, going back to the raw umber, Chinese orange. I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. And pull outwards. This part is more dried. I add in a bit more layer to suggest that you know, the left fore foreleg is kind of folding into the right. And 
Um, adding a bit more paw here for the hind leg. Looks pretty good. This looks pretty good too. Maybe I'm gonna show show off the cat's high cheekbones a bit more. So I'm gonna And I think this is almost done. And if I really wanted want to emphasize the almost like a lion's mane of the chest area, uh, go in and just create some broad strokes around here. Softening the edge of it. And extending the paint more over toward the ears. Basically, as final touch, I'm going through the hard edges that I feel are too hard and just using the correction tip to soften them. All right. I think I'm going to call it at this point and... I'll wait for it to completely dry and show you how it looks like. Now that the painting is dried, I'm going to erase the pencil marks as much as I can. I'm not doing it too thoroughly because I actually like some traces of the pencil. And voila! Here's a Persian cat. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if there's anything that was unclear, if you want me to delve deeper in the next tutorial. I really enjoyed painting this cat and I hope you learned a thing or two about a wet on wet technique and um, how to correct sharp edges. Thanks for watching. See you next time.